Talkies, Emily Waldken here. I have something for you today. A nickel harpa capo. For those of you who don't know what a capo is, it is a little device that you use on string instruments to change the pitch of their open strings. It is mostly used on guitars, where it is so common that it's just a normal thing to do to just, you know, change the ground tone of your guitar when you have to play in unusual keys or just you have to transpose at once. For bowed instruments, we tend usually to retune. For example, fiddles, we have many different types of fiddle tunings in the Scandinavian folk music world and other folk repertoires as well. However, retuning is a little bit messy, it takes some time, sometimes the string just doesn't stay at the tuning that you want it to be. So I have been wondering for some time about a capo, especially for nickel harpa, because retuning a nickel harpa is really complicated. This idea is no invention of mine. I know that Erik Rydvall, for example, has been working on a capo system for his open low C string. So on traditional three rows nickel harpa, unlike this one, uh, the lower string is just a drone, so you, you don't have any tangents on it. And normally it's tuned in a low C, but Eric wanted to be able to change it to a D when the tune would sound better with a low D. From what I understood, he made something more like a key that you can press and then like stays in and makes the C become a D. In a similar fashion, I know that on some Moura Harpas there is a system where you can press some key and then slide it slightly to the side and then the key will stay pressed. Similar system, it's a capo that you press a key and it stays in. For my part, I wanted to have something more akin to a guitar capo, which is a device that is external to the instrument and not built into the keyboard. Also because I have a four rows keyboard which is already really tight and I would not want to risk damaging something in this very well working keyboard. So I experimented a bit throughout the years and I came up with a very very simple thing that any of you can easily make for their own nickel harpas and that works. A little nickel harpa capo. Before we get into the capo design and how it works, I just want to say that I designed this capo on an open back keyboard. So many traditional nickel harpas with three rows especially have an extra piece of wood here that hides the keys. I call these closed back keyboards and I personally think that the open back keyboards are just a much better design if only because you can see the keys when you press them you can see them sticking out and also because it makes the instrument lighter to not have yet another piece of wood we can talk more about the topic of open back or closed back it's not the subject today but i just wanted to point it out because my instrument is an open back and i designed the capo system for an open back so we are actively using the fact that we can see and reach the keys sticking out. So I don't know how to make a similar design of capo that works with a closed back. If you have a closed back keyboard on your nickel harpa, my design will not work as is on your instrument. It might work if you modify it. So let me know if you do and how you made it work. But I will talk about open back keyboards for this video, because that's what I have. The system I started with was just a hair elastic. <laughs> so I just basically took uh, the key I wanted to press in, I put the elastic around, dragged it up, and put it around the back of the key. This kind of works. The problem with hair elastics is that they stretch over time, uh, and sometimes they would be just too long, so I would have to go, you know, around the tangent or around the key. And yeah, they stretch over time, so after a while, an elastic that was working fine a few months before would just not work anymore. So I knew I had to find a system that would be a little bit more durable. But if you are looking for a very easy solution, 
Um, you can start with the hair elastic and explore a little bit. <laughs> it's just not perfect. So I turned myself to leather, which is a material that is quite flexible. It has this elasticity needed to put on the carpo, but is much sturdier than a hair elastic. And I happen to have lots of leather anyways, because I tend to hoard this material for my creative projects. So I measured my nickel harpa and started tracing out some designs of something that could possibly work for a capo. The design I ended up with is very simple. You need to have one hole that goes around the tangent and then a way to fasten the strap of leather down. And I fasten this onto the singing out part of the key, of the same key that I'm pressing in. And that's where you could invent a system to fasten this one differently if you have a closed keyboard. Maybe you need like a nail or a little piece of wood that sticks out. I don't know. <laughs> but the, the principle is very, very simple. So it's an easy little DIY project for a bleak winter Sunday afternoon or something. A quick note here, I did design a one key capo, but as I'm playing a lot in D, I knew that I wanted a capo that would take both strings of C and G and pull both of them up to D and A. So I ended up making a two keys capo quite quickly and that's the one I use. But it's absolutely possible to design a one key capo as well. And then you can also have several and combine them in different ways, of course. I am not giving you the measures of my capo strap because all nickel harpas are different, especially keyboards have a lot of variation. So what functions on mine might just not be the same dimensions for yours. So you will have to measure your instruments and make a few of these before you end up finding the exact right length and spacing of the holes, if you have several, and everything that works for your instrument. All I can tell you to be careful about is that the leather doesn't get in the way of the, the keys that are next to where the leather is. So you want to have it thin enough so that it goes between the keys, yet thick enough, wide enough, so that it's strong enough for the purpose it is serving. It is also a little bit more difficult to make a capo strap that works on a higher row without disturbing the one underneath. Mine works for the lowest row, but if you want to have capos that work on the higher rows of your instrument, you will have to come up with a slightly different design for the lower bit of this strap. Now the important question, does it work and how easy is it to use? So yes, it does work. You just put the two holes onto two tangents, press it down, then drag up and put it behind. Then you press a little bit hard on the keys and you slide the leather as far in as you can. Then comes a little disadvantage, which is very similar to what guitar players experience with their capos, which is that you might need to retune a little bit, as you need quite a lot of pressure to keep the um, tangent having a good contact with the string and not doing this kind of... this kind of noise, but really a clear sound. So you need to press quite a lot, and therefore it might bend a little bit the string and make the note a bit higher. So you might have to retune a little bit. It's a little bit high. There. And maybe you have to tweak a little bit to get, you know, really the key pushed in strong enough so that the sound is clear. And retune slightly, and then... So then you 
have to press it a little bit more. So there is a little bit of adjusting and tweaking, but yes, it definitely works and it's very easy to use and to play with. It is also very easy to remove. You just take the lower bit and you pull it up and it's released at once. Then you might have to retune a little bit again. One of the advantages of this system as opposed to retuning the instrument is that the notes are still at the place that I'm used to have them. So my D and my A are still here in my keyboard. The only difference is that they are continuously pressed up. So I can't have, for example, my open G. So if I want to play my open G, I will have to do fourth finger on the low C. But except for that, I don't need to adapt my brain and my playing to this carpo. Which is one of the difficulties of alternative tunings, for example, on fiddle. If you play fiddle, you know what I mean. The fingerings are different when you play, for example, in A bass. Suddenly you have to adapt your playing of a tune to that tuning. Whereas here... <laughs> and I can still play the tunes almost exactly as I play them without the capo, with the exception of any note that is under where I put the capo. I am pretty satisfied with this little invention of mine. It works, it is very very easy to use, it is very inexpensive to make and it can be derived into many different variants. The only thing I'm not fully satisfied with yet is that leather, although it is a very good material because of its flexibility, does stretch out over time as well. Not as much as the hair elastics, but it does too. So after some time, you will probably need to make a new one. This one is getting stretched. You can already see on the edges here that it's a little bit getting, you know, too stretched and it's not as sharp in the sound as it used to be when it was new. So after some time of usage you will need to make a new strap again. For the making of a new strap to be easier I highly suggest that while you have come up with the good length for your instrument, before you stretch it too much on it, make a paper or cardboard template of the strap, of the capo. So next time you will not have to remeasure everything, but you can just take your leather and trace the template onto it directly and you don't need to do all the measuring stuff again. So I hope this little invention of mine is useful to several of you. Let me know if you find a good system for closed back nickel harpas. I'm sure there are ways to do it to make it work. Let me also know if you expand this design, if you make it in another material or bigger, for example, covering all four strings or I don't know, you know, all the possible extensions that you can come up with. Please let me know, I'm very interested in that and share this video with Nickel Harper friends so we can all have fun exploring with different tunings without having to retune the actual strings because it's a bit messy on nickel harpa. If you find this video and this carpo system useful, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I like giving good ideas like this for free, but making videos is still work and takes time and effort and I still don't get any money from YouTube by choice, so thank you a lot to the people supporting me on Patreon already. And I'll go play uh, quite some tunes in D now. Hey, Dora! <laughs>